Karen Jekyll Life. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today in this video we are going to discuss real time operating systems. So guys, in this video we are going to discuss what is a real time operating system? What are the different types of real time operating system? What are the different features for real time operating system? And what type of addressing is used in real time operating systems? So guys, for the full video, all of you stay tuned. So guys, coming to the definition of real time operating system. Real time operating systems are the operating systems which must ensure two things. First thing is correctness. Now, what do you mean by correctness? So whenever we give some task to the operating system, it should generate the correct result. Okay. And second, which is more important thing it must ensure is timeliness. So what do you mean by timeliness? The results which the real time operating system is generating, they should be generated in a specific period of time. Okay, means they should ensure the deadlines. They should ensure that the deadlines are followed by the operating system. Means what is a real time operating system? Real time operating system is the operating system which produces correct result in a specific period of time. Okay, so in this system, we cannot afford delay. In this system, we cannot afford delay to generate the results. Results should be correct. And number two results should be in the deadlines. Okay, it should not be generated after the deadlines. So real time systems basically they are time critical systems, which should produce the correct result in a given amount of time. So what do we call them? We call them as real time operating systems. So two things important correctness and timely Ness. Okay. And guys, real time operating systems are of two types. First one is called as hard real time and second one is called as soft real time. Now, what is a hard real time? So hard real time system is the system in which our topmost priority is to generate the result in the specific deadlines. Okay. It guarantees that the task will be completed within the deadline. So we cannot afford to delay the results after the deadline. So what is it? What it is? We call it as a real hard real time system. Hard real time system is the system in which the system guarantees that a specific task will be finished or will be completed in the mentioned or in the specified deadlines. We cannot afford any type of delay because the delay can be life threatening. Okay, for example, the for example, air traffic control. So now what is air traffic control system? So in air traffic control, we control the air traffic using some computerized algorithms. Okay, in such where many lives are dependent upon the system, we cannot afford a delay. So system must respond in a fixed period of time. If it does not, we can lose lives. Okay, or there can be a disaster or the consequences of that can be very, very bad. So what do we call such systems? We call them as a hard real time where we must ensure or where we must guarantee the task will be completed in a deadline. Okay, the example for that is air traffic control where lives are dependent on it. So the other type is called as soft real time. So what is a soft real time? Soft real time also ensures timeliness, but it is not very much strict on the timeliness. In soft real times, we expect the results to be on time even if there is some delay okay it is we are fine with it even if there is some delay we are fine with it so soft real time systems they are less restrictive and gives real time task more priority over the other tasks so in soft real time they work like normal operating systems but if the task has to be performed in a real time so they will give a high priority to that task as compared to another task okay and the example of soft real-time systems is online video streaming 
so when we are watching some videos online so we want them videos to play in a real time even if there is one or two second delay we do not mind the lives are not dependent on it the lives are not dependent on it so what do we call them we call them as soft real time systems so we have hard real time which are very strict on the time requirements and we have soft real time system in which we expect the result to be in real time but we are not very strict on the time the example of hard real time is your air traffic control system and the example of soft real time is your online video streaming or your music streaming where we expect everything to go smooth or smoothly but still if if there is a slight delay so we do not mind that so guys i hope you understand the definition and the types of real time systems okay now we will proceed to the features of real time operating systems now guys coming to the features of real time operating system so guys there unlike traditional operating system the real time operating system does not support these operations so what are these operation they do not support any peripheral devices like keyboards cd roms magnetic disks tapes and all those they do not support any input output device or they do not support a large variety of input output devices why did they do not support because the real time operating systems they are designed for a single purpose they are always designed for a specific task okay so they are not designed like the traditional operating system which can do multiple tasks okay so this is the reason they do not support any peripheral or input output much of the input output devices so then number 2 real time system do not support any protection and security mechanism okay since it does not support multiple users and it does not support multiple users so since it does not have multiple users it does not have a large variety of input output files so it does not need much of protection and security mechanism and moreover the real time operating system the processors are very fast okay and the memories are very large so it kind of becomes impossible to provide with the security features okay so then number 3 the real time operating systems does not support multiple users if we add multiple users to a real time system it increases the cost of real time operating systems so they are designed to perform some specific task okay and only to perform that specific task with two things in mind correctness and timeliness now more features we will discuss in the next part now guys the other things which real time operating system does not support is the virtual memory so why it does not support virtual memory because virtual memory it requires main memory unit okay why because virtual memory requires to translate the logical address to physical address now guys all of you know what are logical addresses logical addresses are the addresses which we give to our variable and what are the physical addresses physical addresses are the addresses which operating system gives the physical location where your actual data is stored so in virtual memory what happens so whatever the logical addresses we we give must be translated and must be bind to the physical addresses where the data is stored okay and this address translation this address translation it requires a time so to translate the logical address to physical address we need time okay and in real time operating system time is critical in real time operating system time is critical okay so because the time required for the address translation may affect the hard real time environment means in real time we want the result we want the correct result and we want the result in a specific amount of Time. So, if we are wasting a lot of time in address translation, then it will affect the hard real time environment. Okay, so which we cannot afford. So that is that is one of the reason real time operating systems or real time kernels they do not support multi virtual memory because of 
address translations we translate the address then there is a miss if there is a miss we must fetch the data from the main memory and bring it to the cache which takes lot of time and in real time operating system we cannot afford to waste time okay so then guys how do we do that addressing in real time operating system so that point we will discuss in the next part okay guys just now we discussed like real time operating system that do not support the virtual memory so then how address translation is done or how real time addressing is done so the real time operating system they use these addressing techniques first one is called as real addressing mode then we have dynamic relocation register and then we have a full virtual memory functionality but this thing is in case of soft real time systems not in case of hard real time system so guys now i am going to explain you all these three addressing one by one so guys the first addressing mode which comes is called as real addressing mode okay so what happens in real addressing mode? so in real ad addressing mode so before i explain this so just now we discussed discussed there are two addresses one is the logical addresses other one is the physical addresses okay so in real addressing mode what happens your logical address and your physical address are same so what happens bypass the logical address and let cpu generate the physical address directly so in this what happens we let the cpu generate the physical address directly there is no logical address whatsoever so cpu will generate the physical addresses directly and your data will be stored in those physical locations okay so guys the benefit of this technique is since cpu is directly generating the physical address so we do not need any or we do not waste any time on address translation so directly cpu generates the physical address where your data is stored directly and no need to translate any ad addresses and it saves a lot of time of the cpu okay but what is the disadvantage of this the disadvantage of this is in this the programmer must be aware of all the physical locations which are available and which are used okay so which adds to the complexity of the programmer isn't it since the cpu is generating the physical addresses directly so cpu is referring the physical addresses di directly there is no address translation so the programmer must be aware of all the physical locations which are available and which are used so that is the disadvantage of this technique and the benefit is it is very fast because we do not waste any time on address translation so what do we call it we call it as real addressing mode so guys the next time of addressing which comes we call it as dynamic relocation register or simply we also call it as register addressing so in this what we do is we use one of the cpu register we use one of the cpu register to store the base address to store the base address where your program is stored in the memory okay or to store the base address or we also call it as relocation register from where your program is stored in the memory or at what memory location your program is stored and the physical addresses and the physical addresses are generated by adding the contents of relocation register and the logical address okay cpu generates the logical address and to that logical address we add the content of relocation register that is r and we get the physical address so what do we all call also call it we call it as register addressing where the base value is stored in one of the cpu register and the logical address is generated by the cpu and when we add the logical address to the base value we get the actual physical memory address or we get the actual physical address so what do we call it we call it as dynamic relocation register addressing or simply we call it as register addressing so guys the last addressing technique which comes is full mem full virtual memory functionality i 
missed word virtual full virtual memory functionality now guys all of you know how addresses are translated in virtual memory so in virtual memory we have a page table we have a page table and we have tlb we also call it as translation locus aid buffer so that buffer is a temporary memory which is specially used for address translation so in this mode we are using applying the virtual memory addressing techniques to translate the address so guys this is not more oftenly used in hard real time but you can see this functionality virtual memory address translation functionality very commonly used in the soft real time system so what happens we have page table entries now all of you must be aware of what are page table you must have studied it in your memory management in your operating system and then we have translation look aside buffer so cpu generates the logical address so which maps to the page table and to the page table contents we add the content of translation block size buffer and then we get the actual physical address now this is little time consuming so this is the reason we do not use it much in hard real time operating system but it is very popular in soft real time operating system so what do we call it we call it as full virtual memory functionality so we use the all the functions of virtual memory to translate the logical addresses to physical addresses so guys that's pretty much for today so what we discussed it we discussed what are real time operating systems what are the different types what are the features and how address translation happens in real time operating system so that's all for today so guys if you like my videos please subscribe to my channel i'll be uploading more and more topics related to it subjects like operating system computer organization system analysis and design and so on and all of you guys thanks for watching and stay tuned